Good afternoon from Japan, APO viewers. Welcome to the Productivity Talk organized by the Asian Productivity Organization Secretariat in Tokyo. My name is Santi from APO Secretariat, and I'm very happy to be moderating the first P-Talk series in 2024. Today's P-Talk topic is special because we will discuss the productivity outlook in 2024 by examining the recent productivity trends and forecasts in Asia. We will also look into how technology is constantly influencing productivity performance and prospects across the Asia and Pacific region. We have experts joining us today from the Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy, National University of Singapore, Dr. Fu Kuang, and from the private sector, NEC Corporation, Dr. KG Yamada. But before we start our engaging dialogue, let me briefly provide you with an important update about our recently published EPO Databook 2023. EPO Databook 2023 is the productivity measurement research that captures productivity trends and economic growth performance in member economies. The purpose of this data book is to assist in the analysis of national productivity performance and socioeconomic progress. The data book is developed by a joint research effort between EPO and KO, and it can serve as a main source of productivity statistics in the Asia Pacific. You can find the data book in the EPO homepage and please download it to explain the key sets of 2023 productivity data, which will be instrumental in understanding the outlook for 2024. So that's for the update. Now I would like to introduce our two speakers for today. First, we have Dr. Fu Kuang from the Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy, National University of Singapore. His research and teaching interests focus on strategy and policy concerning economic development and digital transformation. And he has kindly spoken in some EPO programs. Second, also with us today is Dr. Keiji Yamada, an executive from NEC Corporation. He has extensive experience in the management of research and development, including the development and research of artificial intelligence or AI applications. A warm welcome to you, Dr. Fu and Dr. Yamada. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you very much. I hope it's not too late for me to say Happy New Year 2024, Dr. Fu and Dr. Yamada. Happy New Year. Yeah, thank you very much again for joining today's talk, despite of your busy schedule. So we will have Dr. Fu speak first on the macroeconomics perspective or of productivity trends, and then Dr. Yamada will be focusing on the impact of AI and digital technology. And for EPO viewers, Please remember that we will have a Q&A session later, so you are encouraged to send questions or comments in the chat box. Now I invite Dr. Fu to deliver his presentation. Dr. Fu, please. Thank you. Thank you, Santa. Uh, Happy New Year to everyone. It's a great pleasure to be here on this platform to share with you some latest observation and insight about productivity outlook in 2024. So my presentation will focus on economic projection, recent patterns of productivity growth, influencing factors, and some strategic policy implication uh, for all uh, the nation. So in my presentation, first I'm talking about economic forecast for 2024, uh, and then I discuss the uh, recent uh, pattern of productivity growth in Asia and uh, um, uh, actually mentioning a lot of uh, result uh, coming out from the uh, APO uh, data uh, uh, report, productivity report. And I find it extremely helpful for all of us uh, to look at uh, to infer uh, policy implication. And the last one I'm talking about influencing, influencing factor 
and policy implication for uh, every country in Asia to promote economic growth and uh, uh, productivity enhancement. So economic forecast for 2024. Um, here, actually, that's the latest forecast coming out from the UN report uh, in January. So uh, uh, actually, uh, three things are uh, coming out here. The first one, uh, economic growth in 2023 turned out to be better than projected uh, in uh, mid-2023, um, worldwide as well as across major economy. That's surprising because at the early yeah, 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 2023, or oh, uh, observed a lot of shocks um, and uncertainty, and somehow pro projection uh, uh, must be uh, quite a conservative. But it turned out to be uh, better than uh, we expected. So uh, globally, uh, economic growth actually uh, in this uh, year is uh, um, recorded at 2.7 percent. So 0.4 percent uh, percentage point. Um, than the uh, project projected um and uh, the two uh, country here um and actually two main region here is asia and china south asia and india actually also outperformed the projection um so china uh, is asia actually recorded 4.9 uh, percent uh, for gdp growth and india 6.3 percent growth um however for 2024 um, actually, the uh, UN and other international organizations still maintain some uh, conservative uh, projection. So they expect actually uh, growth actually um, would be would be uh, slowed down compared to 2023. Um, so that, that's what actually we have to look out for. One actually the key observation here I would like to share with you actually the uh, uh, actually the outperformance of uh, South Asia compared to East Asia. That's a very interesting development. Uh, so India, uh, South Asia now are uh, uh, expected to grow at 5.2%, uh, led by India uh, growing at 6.2%. So significantly uh, higher than East Asia, uh, growing at 4.6%, and uh, led by China just 4.7%. So that's very interesting development in recent year. So um, that's what we, um, something actually maybe the new trend we, we should look at. So very good news for our South Asian nation. And um, compared to the last 10 years, East Asia somehow uh, actually experienced a, a slowing down in, um, in economic growth, but still very robust compared to other parts of the world. But South Asia, as I mentioned, uh, still sustained fairly good growth and um, and definitely uh, a lot of good things uh, may be coming out from South Asia in the time to come. Regarding uh, productivity growth, uh, because I look at the labor productivity growth uh, on actually uh, um, uh, at the key nation here, US, Japan, uh, European uh, area um, uh, for 17 countries and Korea. Uh, because uh, these countries have the latest data and very accurate one. Um, uh, um, uh, and here we see two uh, patterns here. Uh, South Korea and the US still sustain quite a robust growth in labor productivity. However, Japan and EU uh, somehow uh, experience uh, uh, stagnant growth in productivity. So the implication here is that actually uh, productivity growth actually not for granted. Some country perform much better than others. So that definitely a very important policy uh, issue for an on country to address. So recent pattern, uh, productivity growth in Asia. Um, so the information and uh, uh, re result from the APO productivity data book is extremely uh, helpful and valuable. And I have uh, uh, actually intensively used it for advising policymakers in Asia uh, uh, in the uh, seven years, in the last uh, few years, and in the time to come. So the first one, um, if you look at the uh, 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 GDP growth over the past 20 years, 21 years, including two years of you know, um, uh, 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 pandemic, the COVID pandemic, um, you can see that China actually let uh, uh, 
uh, is actually leading player in uh, GDP growth, uh, recording 7.7%, followed by Cambodia, Bangladesh, Vietnam, and India. So here we can see a big picture here. Uh, actually, the country not only from East Asia, but also from South Asia, um, uh, uh, recording a very impressive growth. But you also see some countries uh, stagnated, uh, uh, stagnated uh, um, like a Brunei or Japan. So the, the range of uh, GDP growth um, uh, actually from very low one to uh, very high one. So um, that's, that's an issue we should, we should look at. And in terms of sources of growth, uh, here's an important insight we should uh, um, cons uh, uh, look at actually the uh, capital uh, accumulation still a uh, major driver of economic growth uh, across country. Um, so it means the miracle of investments did play a very important role in driving growth uh, and uh, economic catch up across nation, uh, especially for uh, developing, developing countries. So even for, uh, for example, in South Korea, you can see that investment uh, uh, or capital accumulation still account for 50%. For some country like Bangladesh or China or Vietnam, 70% or 60%. So it means actually economic reform, very important to uh, foster uh, investment while actually uh, uh, investing in uh, digital technology and green transformation also play an important role we'll discuss later. If you look at the industry origins of GDP growth uh, over the past 10 years, we can see that manufacturing play a very important role uh, in most countries for GDP growth. Uh, but other sector like the finance, uh, um, trade and uh, uh, transport and logistics also play an important role. And at the same time, uh, TFP growth um, uh, appear to be uh, uh, quite increasingly important uh, source of, of growth. So it means the application of digital technology um, uh, actually playing a uh, more and more important role in driving growth in the time ahead. Now, if you look at the uh, um, per capita GDP growth, because we know that uh, per capita GDP growth coming from two sources, labor productivity growth and the employment uh, rates. It means that we mobilize more people from the population to work. Uh, and you can see here, uh, labor productivity determine majority, more, more than 90% uh, you know, of uh, per capita uh, GDP growth. So it means if a nation want to prosper in the time to come, playing, uh, paying strategic attention to fostering labor productivity is very crucial. If we look at the sources of labor productivity growth using the growth accounting methods, we can see that against um, uh, the um, capital deepening, it means the capital accumulation, uh, accumulation per uh, worker quite important. For example, China growing uh, labor productivity growth at 7.6%, 4.6% this point coming from their uh, uh, capital investment. Um, uh, and for Vietnam, 4.2% uh, uh, out of 5.6%. So again, we are capital deepening, investment, very important. So it means if you want to embrace uh, digital uh, technology effectively, the complementary uh, investment play a very important role. And of course, you know, labor quality and TRP growth, you can see here, also play a very important role, uh, uh, especially for the, the leading performer here, including uh, China or, or India, you know, 2% for TFP growth. So a lot of efficiency gain here. That's a good news as well. If we look at the origins, um, industry origins of labor productivity growth uh, over the uh, last 10 years, we can see that uh, actually the manufacturing uh, play an important role. However, here I would like to uh, point out a very important finding here is uh, agriculture play an important role. So the, the labor productivity in uh, agriculture actually uh, increased substantially in most countries. Do you know why? Because the share of labor in this sector uh, decreased substantially. So this country create a lot of jobs outside of agriculture. So more uh, relocating people from agriculture to manufacturing, to services, 
So it enables uh, the agriculture sector to prosper uh, and increasing uh, their um, uh, labor productivity substantially. So that actually is the, the common phenomena uh, across the nation, uh, especially the, 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 the leading performer here. Uh, performer. For TFP growth, um, you can see so in the last period here, you can see the dark red here, uh, the leading uh, uh, player it turned out to be Cambodia, quite interesting. Uh, so actually they, 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 they uh, use their resources more efficiently in the, the recent year. And Vietnam also uh, a, a good player here. Uh, uh, Taiwan, 2.1%, uh, Singapore, 2.1%, China, 1.7%. So we can see uh, a number of countries achieving uh, TFP growth, uh, exceeding 1.0% here um, uh, from Hong Kong onward here. Um, that's that, uh, an uh, interesting pattern to observe. One thing here, and Dr. Yamada with, in that actually to complain, uh, in complaint, uh, my, uh, my, this observation later on, but I would like to emphasize that ICT uh, research and development capital uh, uh, share in, um, um, in, 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 in GDP uh, growing. Um, the stock uh, compared to GDP um, in 2021, it means the latest data here, very high for some country, but slow for some other country. Uh, but uh, Korea, Japan, Singapore, US and Taiwan uh, uh, actually appear to uh, the leading one uh, in have very uh, very large actually um, uh, stock of ICT and innovation capital here. Uh, Thailand, China, and Malaysia are also a strong one. India uh, uh, still very modest, uh, but uh, actually on, on the rise. Some other country like uh, Vietnam, Sri Lanka are uh, still below 4.5%. Um, uh, um. Now, if you want to drive uh, um, productivity growth, I would like to emphasize the importance of the, uh, the factor uh, underlying this. First of all, of all, we have to understand the eight global mega trend that actually shaped the patterns of uh, economic growth uh, in the time to come. The first one, uncertainty, unpredictability, and unthinkable. That actually the major characteristic we should look, consider for our efforts to promote economic growth. So it also um, uh, implies that economic reforms and decisive leadership play a very uh, important role in uh, overcoming these challenges. The second one, global integration and global supply chain reconfiguration uh, play an important role. So geopolitics actually play some role here, but global uh, integration, especially in Asia, is still quite robust. And we see the rise of Asia, as I mentioned, China, India, and ASEAN, and other parts of Asia uh, actually enjoy uh, some robust growth compared to other parts of the world. And they not only uh, promote uh, economic reform, but also uh, foster the efforts to embrace uh, digital and green tra transformation. And we also see the urbanization uh, taking place here. Uh, quite robustly. So if you have time, you can look at the metro system construction across the city in many countries here, also uh, actually as, as, uh, speeding up. That's, but we also see the concern here, population aging in some nation, uh, like in Japan, South Korea, and Thailand, for example, and, and, Thai, and China on Vietnam. So it means some country here in face uh, the risk that uh, getting old before getting rich. That's a, a big challenge. But two uh, major drivers um, uh, of economic growth in the time to come, definitely digital revolution, especially the, the AI, the generative AI and digital transformation. And the second one, it's a renewable um, uh, energy development and green technology uh, progress. The last one is social responsibility. You can see companies and policy makers pay a lot of attention to social media and to, to the voice of people in uh, their decision making. That somehow very important uh, factor underlying uh, economic growth in the time to come. And here I would like to share with you the framework to promote productivity. So if you want to promote labor productivity, because labor productivity determines the compensation, 50% come to the worker as a wage. 
but 50% come to the uh, capital uh, owner. Um, so that uh, enhance the, uh, the attractiveness of investment. So capital deepening here, uh, that's important to determine the productivity growth as we see across the nation. But labor quality becoming even more important in the time to come because of the technology and the application to improve efficiency, it means total factor productivity here. So these three components will determine the rates of labor productivity growth and the GDP growth. Um, so institutional uh, arrangement play a very important role. And on the left side here is macroeconomic stability, uh, uh, market functioning and competition, infrastructure and urban development, global integration and financial sector development. On the right side here, I would like to emphasize the importance of education system, innovation and observative capability, cluster development, structural change, it means allocating the people from lower productivity to high productivity sector, and also social inclusiveness. And the major pillar under all of these efforts um, uh, to promote uh, the determinants of growth actually are uh, digital transformation and uh, a green uh, transition. So uh, here I also try to uh, draw uh, the policy implication, policy implication for fostering productivity growth. The first one, uh, based on my research, I see the productivity mindset very important. All policymaker and business leader have to engage in reimagination of the future and understand clearly uh, the global mega trend that shape the future. The second one, innovation become critically important. And we have to challenge the status quo. We have to change. That's important thing. The third one, learning capability uh, and knowledge acquisition. We have to foster the effort to acquire knowledge and learning. The next one is uh, resource mobilization and deployment. If you have a lot of resources, but we do not deploy them very well, uh, I mean the structural chain here, we do not uh, make it. So focusing on uh, embracing the higher productivity sector or location uh, to uh, foster mo uh, resource mobilization to higher uh, productivity area. That's important uh, thing. Number five here is synergy enhancing collaboration and partnership. This actually amazing treasure all nations should embrace. So turning enemy to friends, you know, Turning the uh, you know uh, the, the 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 partner historically uh, uh, rooted uh, conflicts uh, uh, to be your allies into the future important uh, rather than you know uh, just focus on uh, fighting that's not a good thing um, so I, I I do believe that ASEAN country and Asian country now set a good example for uh, other part of the world um, in moving forward number six here. Digital transformation and AI de deployment play a very important role, and uh, we cannot imagine how powerful they are in the uh, next uh, three to five years and 2024. So, to give us some uh, amazing example again uh, um, uh, very soon. So, they not only help us to enhance the operational excellence, uh, but also foster synergy through the platform economy and also for a, a company uh, to go uh, come up with new business model, very uh, innovative one. The next one, green transformation, circular economy, and renewable energy development will take uh, a new high, um, to the new height. So a uh, thousand billion of dollars will be invested in this area in the, in the next few years. And the last but not least, uh, resilient um, on the way, the major characteristic uh, uh, for our own policy uh, policymaker to consider seriously, given that we face so much, you know, uncertainty and even unthinkable uh, in 2024 and in the time to come. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the insightful presentation, Dr. Fu. This is so interesting to know the broader productivity trends. Now let's explore into how these trends are actually being realized and further in the corporate sector, especially through AI and digital technologies with Dr. Yamada. Without further ado, Dr. Yamada, please deliver your presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Santi. So, happy new year. I'm very happy to be here and to share my insight on uh, uh, 
2024 productivity outlook uh, with the old participant. So today I'd like to introduce the, my insight on uh, uh, 2024 productivity outlook from the viewpoint of AI and digital technologies. So the a top Goldman Sachs analyst, the Peter Oppenheimer said, world is moving into a new super cycle. Super cycles are commonly uh, defined as uh, lengthy periods of economic expansion, often accompanied by growing GDP strong demand for goods, leading to higher prices and a high level of employment. He said, an improvement in productivity on the back of the application of AI could be positive for growth and, of course, for margins. Artificial intelligence and the decarbonization will be driving factors that will boost the global economy to a new super cycle. So I'd like to see 2024 productivity outlook from the viewpoint of AI and digital technologies. So now before introducing 2024 outlook of AI and digital technologies, uh, let me re review changes after 2020. The impact of the COVID-19 changed our mindset and forces us to accept dramatic changes by digitization in our daily life. So examples are e-commerce, food delivery, grocery delivery, cashless and digital payment, work from home and online meeting. The right figure shows that the e-commerce uh, e e sales in the United States jumped up between the first quarter and the second quarter of the 2020. So during the recovery from the COVID-19, we faced the social and environmental changes and uh, found that several new technologies were effective for our productivity improvement. Examples of the social changes are the hybrid work, digital transformation in large companies and the national governments, the supply chain risk, and the carbon neutrality. Furthermore, we had the hottest summer on record last year. The new technologies we found are data twin, metaverse, cloud-based services, generative AI, and large language model, IoT, and 5G mobile. So although we adopted the new technologies to improve our productivity, new issues became apparent in last year. The big companies and the national government started using the digital technologies well, but small and medium enterprises or administrations in the small local cities didn't adopt, adopt the digital technologies well or didn't improve their productivities enough. Also, uh, digital technology aimed to reduce uh, human resources. The many organizations ironically suffered shortage of the human resources to use digital technologies. Adoption of the digital technology revealed an information gap between the senior management and the business field. The digital technologies produces a long seamless value chain and the supply chain. But we found there were risk of hidden pitfalls over a long value chain. We thought we had integrated all systems in our organization together. However, we found that there were still various kinds of fragmentation and no interoperability in our organization. The furthermore, we found risks of the AI. AI may tell a lie. AI has an unethical nature. And we found it was so difficult to balance between the carbon neutrality and economic growth. So in 2024, new additional technologies will be developed to solve these issues I showed on the previous slide. The right hand slide, uh, right hand side shows the new uh, technical trend in this year. There are human AI robotics collaboration. 
no code, no co allow code for AI applications, AI orchestration, risk analysis of complex systems, and distributed organization, responsible AI machine intelligence, and acceleration of sustainable technologies. Let me explain the details of the some of them. So as I mentioned, some industries such as nursing care, agriculture, and uh, uh, warehouses haven't used intelligent technologies yet. Collaborative work of human expert and AI robotics will promote them to use AI and robotics more and more and improve their productivity. The technology can automatically, dynamically, optimally assign tasks to machines, robots, and human workers. So I use case, one use case of the technology is sustainable, sustainable farming support. We work with the food company, Kagome Corporation, who produces a tomato product in particular. Our technologies achieved 30% increase in yield of tomato and 20% reduction in fertilizer by collaboration of human expert and IoT and drones with AI. AI orchestration is another application. Uh, the technology to integrate the customize the heterogeneous AI systems and the heterogeneous data set to solve complex real problems. The central figure shows the mechanism to control traffic dynamically. It can optimize all traffic signals in a city to minimize the queues at every junction. It can also quickly recover the normal traffic from an accident. Furthermore, it can optimally control traffic signals for emergency cars, even in congestions. Uh, this is another application for uh, automatic operation of multiple drones. Inter-AI negotiation coordinate multiple operators to automatically optimize the path of the many drones and flight airs, uh, air flight. We demonstrated it with an airport in Japan, Wakana Airport. It also improved the productivity of every drone user for their business through co cooperative drone control. So, the distributed organization is a new uh, natural extension of hybrid work and solves the geogra geographical bias of talent resources and asset. Through human AI and robot collaboration, several IT systems and advanced network like 5G based on fundamental AI technologies, we can realize the practical applications such as distributed hospitals, distributed municipal offices, remote farms, and remote construction. So one of the, its use cases is remote construction based on remote control of construction machines by collaboration of human operator and machines with AI. By using the system, each operator can control more than two machines from a remote office. Furthermore, operators can conduct teamwork from the different offices. The system can conduct cooperative work of machines like a power shovel and a dump truck. It reduces the workforce and, and protect operators from accident because they don't need to be at a dangerous construction site. The last topic is the responsible AI. Many entities, the organization made their guidelines for AI. So far, they show what to comply with. However, it is difficult to know how to make responsible AI and how to use AI safely. In 2024, many organizations will provide guidelines and tools for making responsible AI and showing the way to use AI safely. 
Uh, I want to con uh, conclude uh, my talk. I introduced seven items as a 2024 productivity outlook from the viewpoint of AI and the digital technologies with current use cases. I'd like to add one more thing. The right figure shows the strong correlation between the digital investment and the GDP. Every player in every industry cannot afford digital investment. Small companies and the small local government are in particular. Policymakers' role is crucial for better productivity through AI and digital technologies. The first one is digital investment to accelerate digital transformation. The second one is a support to development of the digital talent. The third one is provision of AI guidelines and the tools for making and using responsible AI and the digital technologies. AI isn't matured yet. Let's use such an immature technology as well to improve productivity well this year. Thank you very much for your attention. presentation, Dr. Yamada explaining the productivity outlook from the perspective of AI and digital technology. Now, let us proceed to the Q&A session. Uh, this is very surprising to know that the economic growth in 2023 turned out better than projected previously, but in 2024, it's projected to significantly slow down. The question here is, in recent years, Dr. Fu and Dr. Yamada, which specific industries or sectors in Asia have experienced significant change in productivity? And how do you perceive the impact of AI and digital technology adoption on these changes? For this question, may I ask Dr. Fu first to share your opinion, and then after that, maybe Dr. Yamada can complement. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Santi. So look, actually, the growth pattern is the past few years, especially 2023, and our prospect for 2024. You can see the, that we, um, um, a lot of uncertainty here. However, things seem to be getting better over time because of a lot of you know opportunity emerging uh, for policymakers to embrace to promote economic growth. So I, I see that actually. We, uh, on country, face the three great uh, challenges here. The first one is uncertainty. No one can actually predict uh, what would happen um, uh, into the future. The second one, competition, global uh, competition uh, worldwide. But the, the last one is, I think, most important. Uh, on country, have to look at actually the old-fashioned mindset. We have to overcome this one. That's challenging. At the same time, opportunity. Uh, it actually includes, you know, technology, uh, green transition, and global collaboration. So uh, the reason for us to th see things getting better, uh, regardless of uncertainty, is that policymakers in many countries now very much uh, decisively uh, address the uh, critical challenges and embracing uh, uh, opportunity. So I see uh, good performance uh, in most countries in terms of, you know, Productivity growth in agriculture, in trade, in transport uh, and ICT services, and even in uh, and in manufacturing. So definitely um, opportunity and challenges coming together. And I see actually the country uh, uh, emerging as a leading player. Uh, uh, those actually address both uh, challenges uh, decisively and also embrace opportunity uh, robustly. If the country falls low behind. Falling behind uh, in uh, addressing challenges and embracing uh, opportunity uh, should be the the, lag, the lagging ones. Thank you. Thank you. And Dr. Yamada, how do you see the impact of AI and digital technology of adoption in these changes? Dr. Fu mentioned agriculture and manufacture industry experience significant changes. Thank you. Uh, especially the manufacturing industry has adopted AI and data technology more than other industries. The technologies are the automation, robotics, intelligent machines, AI, and so on. Uh, they help workers in industry to improve their productivities itself. The technology improved the total factor productivity and extend the amount of the international trade. 
the, as the uh, Professor Wu said, uh, the, I, I agree with him. So agriculture and uh, some logistics and other industry can also introduce the, some uh, digital technology as well. So this year, the, this, is, this year is the first year to utilize the AI technologies more. Yeah. Okay. So thank you very much for the wonderful answer, Dr. Fu and Dr. Yamada. So we received some questions in the chat box from APO viewers. This is one of the interesting question. I think this one is for Dr. Yamada. So the question is for uh, from the, uh, Mr. Amit Kumar. So the question is, with the increasing adoption of AI and automation, what strategies should business adopt to balance technological advancements with the human workforce? This is interesting. So the question is about how to balance. Dr. Yamada, please. Uh, the first one is, uh, please go back to the first one. Uh, the barrier, huh? biggest barrier, yeah. Uh, I, I think some uh, small and the medium-sized company will uh, utilize AI, but the uh, most important issue is the, uh, the shortage of the human resources. The very li limited number of the resources can utilize the data technologies. So then uh, we should uh, some train and educate the workers to utilize the AI. So I want to share the some example of the Toyota Motor Corporation. The two or three years ago, the chairman of that company the ordered all employees to utilize the digital technologies. And also they built the some very good organization to educate the old workers to, to use the AI. After the two years later, so more than the 50, 15% of the employee could the, develop the AI by themselves. That was, was very good examples. Then we should have a very good education system to train the workers and the employee to utilize, to make the AI better. That is the one thing. The second question, what is the second question? I yeah, the, yeah, the second question is about how to balance the digital yeah, technology. Yeah. And human uh, the, as I introduced the, as a first topic of my uh, the presentation, the human and the AI, the collaboration is the most important part. Then the, we should design the AI to work with the, uh, the workers. Uh, uh, the, at this moment, the AI is not perfect. Then the, we should the, co design the process to collaborate the, with AI, that's a very important thing. The, maybe the human worker has some benefit to, uh, to do well. Then the AI has uh, some benefit. Then the, we should con uh, consider the, the benefit of the both. Then the, the process design is very important. Okay, I highlight here, this is interesting. You mentioned that AI is not perfect as of now. So it means we still need to be progressive in the upcoming years for the development of AI itself. So this is also interesting, uh, Dr. Fu and Dr. Yamada. So we talk about AI and all of the benefits um, promised by AI itself. So how do you think corporation can leverage macroeconomic data, especially this is from APO site presented in the APO data book to enhance their productivity through digital technology. So yes, this question is for both of you. Maybe, yeah, Dr. Fu, you can go first. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think the, the great uh, uh, things uh, this day, actually the data available uh, from uh, many sources and especially the APO uh, productivity data set is so valuable. The report very insightful. So give us a lot of uh, information and projection. So the corporation actually can uh, leverage this thing uh, for um, their formulation of strategy and um, uh, implement, uh, um, implementing it. Uh, the first one actually for market uh, projection. So they understand what are the, the, the patterns um, 
of uh, growth in uh, different sector and the in the overall economy and employment uh, expansion or or shrinking in certain sector so that company know much better um, the direction uh, um, in term of uh, growth in the economy and also in the neighbor uh, uh, ring country or in other market so that they can make uh, more uh, informed decision yeah, for their strategic investment. But here I would like to emphasize that data itself cannot help the company uh, uh, effectively. They have to think more clearly about their strategy, what kind of value they would like to create for customer in the time to come. That's the first thing. And the second one, enhancing the coordination capability because applying uh, AI or embracing digital transformation needs a major change in their uh, coordination, coordination capability. Uh, and in Singapore, you call the whole op organization uh, concept. It means they work at once, uh, very united and very innovative and share the same vision to improve uh, productivity. Thank you, Dr. Fu. So here the coordination is very crucial, right? How to leverage the macroeconomic data because out there, there are so many data that actually we can, yeah, we can use and we can get the benefit of it. So for Dr. Yamada, how do you see corporation can leverage macroeconomic data presented in APO data book? Hmm. Uh, I found three significant factors in the APO data book 2023. The one is the international supply chain. APO members have improved the way to manage supply chain to overcome the world in uncertainties. The second one is the labor productivity and the per capita GDP. The last one is the service industry. Uh, it contributed to the total productivity improvement. I believe that data technology could help the improvement of the, these factors. That's my perspective. Thank you very much, Dr. Yamada and Dr. Fu for answering the questions. Now, um, I realized in Dr. Yamada presentation, you mentioned about AI orchestration. It means like now single AI can be more heterogenic and out there, outside there, they have many integration of AI. So the question is, I think you have highlighted also in your presentation, what principles that government should adhere when implementing AI technologies to improve the total factor of productivity as Dr. Fu mentioned. So yeah, uh, could you please highlight again, how is the principles for government? Thank you. This question is for Dr. Yamada. Okay, so the, the government should the, define the, some guidelines for the AI usage and the making the, the good AI. That's very important. And also, the, uh, the, as I mentioned, so education of the AI users is very important. Uh, the AI sometimes tell a lie. So the, we, we should not the believe the all, all things AI said. So then the, we should the, cleverly, wisely select, uh, select the answer from the AI. That, that is our the, the, uh, skill to use the AI. That, the government has a very uh, the, uh, important role to educate the people. That's my answer. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Yamada. And uh, for Dr. Fu, uh, continuing the answer from Dr. Yamada about the principles. So do you think there are any mechanisms are in place now currently to monitor the impact of policies on productivity improvement through AI and digital technology? Maybe you have been working in academia and so with government as well. Do you see any mechanism already in place to monitor the impact of policies on productivity improvement through AI and digital technology. Thank you. Great, thank you. So I think AI and digital transformation are very powerful forces uh, shaping the future. So the first, uh, actually, the uh, uh, standard we uh, should emphasize here, actually ethical uh, using uh, of AI to make sure 
that we use AI for the benefits uh, and the welfare of, of nation and, and company. Uh, and the second one, uh, the, uh, we applying uh, have to produce a tangible uh, result um, so that we can create some momentum here. And um, I would like to focus on productivity and challenges. So addressing the challenges and improving productivity for sure, we can garner the support of the people and can produce a tangible result right away. And the third one, because AI actually under very pro rapid progress, so we have to uh, form some uh, agency accountable for mon monitoring progress uh, 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 in this area and, uh, and enhancing the coordination across sector uh, and, and company uh, working together uh, so, uh, so that um, um, all of us actually are on the same pace in exploit, uh, exploiting AI rather than uh, falling into some uh, social division here. And uh, so that definitely we, we see the, the great benefit, but also very much concerned about some, some potential risks associated with, with AI and digital transformation. I see. Thank you very much, Dr. Hu and Dr. Yamada. Now let's uh, talk a bit about the green challenges because Dr. Fu mentioned in your presentation that one of the indicator of uh, labor productivity growth uh, it's in also included capital depending, labor quality, and total factor of productivity. And inside of that, we also taking care into the adopting green and cir circular practices. So the question here is what actually the challenges and opportunities that are associated with adopting green and circular practices, especially now in the post-pandemic world? So this question may be for, uh, first from doc, for Dr. Fu. Thank you. Yeah, so actually um, a green transition and circular economy also another exciting issue uh, and it poses both um, uh, challenges and opportunity for policymakers and business leader to embrace. So uh, again, I emphasize three challenges here. The first one, I do believe that actually is the old fashioned mindset. Somehow we still get used to the traditional and brown economy. So very difficult for business leader or even policymaker to embrace the new uh, trend of green transformation. The second one, uh, things changing so rapidly so we do we cannot you know find out some you know standard model for us to adopt because it's changing and uh, the third one actually some uh, drastic uh, uh, uncertainty uh, like uh, you know the conflict between ukraine and russia causing the fuel price going up or whatever so um, and uh, so some company have to go back to the the, the traditional um, uh, fuel for example so some uncertainty also uh, uh, may uh, actually have de delayed some effort on a green transformation. However, um, here I would like to emphasize the opportunity because for the first time, uh, actually you can see very rapid progress in technology um, so that you know we can turn air, solar and, and wind into energy. And we are going also to see the small modular nuclear power, a uh, very small one and very safe one. So definitely um, uh, the, 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 the new mindset is very important and also have to develop uh, capability in this area more robustly. So far, somehow, I think most nations stand behind in the efforts uh, of you know, creating the enabling uh, environment for uh, embracing uh, green transformation. Thank you very much, Dr. Fu. So uh, I have taken note that uncertainty is still one of the challenges for the green transformation, but outside there we have so many opportunities as well. And Dr. Yamada, how do you see AI and the green transformation, especially now in the post-pandemic world? Uh, from the uh, technology side, so I think some uh, power generation and also the renewable you know, energy harvest is a very important technology. But uh, I think the one more thing, so the one of the challenges and opportunity is a market for carbon credit. AI and the data technology can contribute to such a market. So at this moment, the limited number of the big, big enterprises adopted the trade of the carbon credit. But I think the carbon credit market will expand this year and a large portion of 
the small and the medium enterprises, including the farmers and the forestry organizers, uh, organization will join the trade. They will start to join the uh, the market for carbon credit. That's my answer. Thank you very much, Dr. Yamada and Dr. Fu, for your wonderful questions. This is last questions because we almost run out of time. So, what do we expect in 2024 when it comes to productivity performance of APO members' economy, given the many uncertainty, uncertainties that we are now experiencing? For this question, may I ask Dr. Yamada to share your opinion? First. Thank you. Okay, so the APO members will utilize AI and digital technologies in real earnest. The technologies will improve the productivities in many industries and organizations. They will be able to overcome the uncertainties dynamically and adaptively to the rapid change of geopolitics and the economics. Then we should work with AI and digital technologies as well to improve our productivity. Uh, that is my answer. Dr. Fu? Yeah, actually 2024 should expect an uh, exciting development because AI and uh, new technology now penetrated uh, across nation and um, uh, not like before, now a billion people can have access to this technology uh, at low cost or even uh, uh, no cost. So definitely you can see a lot of innovation and innovative application of AI and technology in everywhere, even in remote area. So definitely we should expect some, uh, you know, unprecedented uh, progress um, uh, in prosperity and in stand-up of living and uh, in commitment of the people to move forward. So here you now we can see progress not only in East Asia, but also in South Asia. Actually, in my research, I actually say, uh, uh, excited to see a lot of development even in very poor country before, like Bangladesh or uh, some part of you know, uh, um, India, for example. And, uh, and, and now we can see prosperity everywhere. And technology and green transformation um, should be the major pillar driving this forward. Thank you very much. Uh, that's for today's Q&A. So we thank Dr. Fu and Dr. Yamada for sharing their insights on the topic of productivity outlook 2024. I personally feel we had a very enriching discussion today and learned that emerging challenges in productivity still exist, especially when we go back to the basic determinants of productivity growth as explained by Dr. Fu. However, with the crucial roles played by policymakers and digital technology, we can remain optimistic about achieving the best outcomes as highlighted by Dr. Yamada in his presentation with AI and robotics collaboration with human as a good example. So now I would like to ask for a final message from both speakers. So maybe just quickly, one minute. So first, I would like to invite Dr. Yamada, final message, please. Thank you. Okay, 2024 is the first year to utilize AI the practically. Now let's start with the AI for the, the very small step. Then the, we can the, replace the, some of our uh, process by using the data technologies more. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Yamada. Dr. Fu? Yeah, I would like to emphasize the importance of synergistic partnership across nation and across company and organization. We have to work together to produce a lot more uh, for our own uh, generation, but also for the future generation. So I'd like to emphasize three uh, critical pillars uh, underlying the synergistic partnership here. The first one, strategic trust. We have to enhance that one. Um, the second one, um, we have to have a high sense um, of you know, responsibility for the future generation. Um, and the third one, uh, definitely uh, we have to share a vision that we uh, have to leave uh, behind a much better uh, planet for the future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Fu and Dr. Yamada. We also thank our viewers and hope that this speed talk provides a comprehensive and forward-looking perspective on productivity performance for navigating the complex landscape of productivity in the Asia and Pacific region. Please tune in in our forthcoming P-Talks to learn about different topics 
that affect the productivity of individuals, organization, and economies. Please stay healthy, stay productive, and goodbye for now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Hu, Dr. Yamada. Great.